All right, welcome everyone. We are Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for Rock Go, Season 2, Episode 7. seven. Yakumo right. has woken up. Yakumo's awake. He's yep. still holding on. He's still fighting. Mm -hmm. and Even if he's a bit surprised by that. And that's good. That's yeah. good. Everyone is happy to see him. And, and uh, yeah. freaking, freaking Yotaro, or... or Sukuroku mm -hmm. uh, blew everyone away with, with his, his performance Inokori. right after Yakumo collapsed. So like he never got to see it. Oh wow! Yeah, he yeah he never got to see it. But I know. But he was able to perform like that under that much pressure. Yeah, that is yeah. crazy. Oh, it's just like our boy is doing so well. He's yeah, grown he so really much. Is. And then when we see the state that Yakumo is in, we're like, oh my god, like when are we going to get the focus and peel back the the layers of this onion and find out like what's mm -hmm. going on inside you, dude? We yep. we know yep. we know the pain and the suffering, the anguish and the the shame that you feel. But like yeah. but like you need to talk about this with someone because there's there's been like developments, changes and oh, yeah. and and this whole thing happened. So but maybe yeah. because this happened now they can. Yep. You know, because he's, he's realized literally, he's literally stuck. He <laughs> can't go anywhere. Yeah. And and he's realized that I haven't given up just yet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. So y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, and then come back here for the discussion. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because right. why not? The twist we, why we not? never knew we needed or yeah. uh, could uh, never have well, expected. We didn't even really need it. But well, we needed an explanation but, oh, for we needed an explanation for in some ways a lot of Yakumo's shame. When one of the things that <sighs> they they tied up rather well within season one was that we were given an explanation as to why the shame is one that uh, he's connected with thus far. But Kanatsu, specifically, also being someone that really believed that uh -huh. he. Is yeah. responsible for their deaths. Yep. Yep. Now, we were literally shown this this scene, basically. Bloody Sukiroku. Uh-huh. And that's why we always just assumed that it would be a mafia kind of right, right. thing. Right, right. Debts or something like that. But but, but now we were thinking, like, okay, we and, can just forget uh, that because he just fell to his death. But yeah, and, and they didn't show anything of the aftermath, so it kind of made sense, even though even though that's bloody in a well, did we see the, the context? I don't think we saw a room no. when we saw it. We just saw no, him. We saw like a with, white background. Yeah, yeah, was... with with him in in the blood. So so that could have been after he fell. But he wouldn't right? have. He wouldn't have bled. Oh my god. So holy crap. Oh so this god. recontextualizes a whole lot. The biggest thing that we can bring from this is that Yakumo <sighs> Uh, Yakumo is internalizing this, all this, is oh, yeah. shouldering all this upon him for her sake. Mm -hmm. For yeah. her sake. Yeah. Oh, boy. And also because he partially probably does feel responsible for all this to, have yes. to happen. Yes, and, and also probably as his, like, like both for her sake and for the... For the Close, 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 close bond that he had with Sukuroku. Uh -huh. You know, the, of course he's going to take care of Kanatsu, right? right? And especially if it's something like this where she actually caused it? Like, like well, or, or no, played no. a part. She played a part and she accidentally killed her own mother. Right. Now, she doesn't know that she did. Yeah. And while Sukeroku did choose to leap after her to try and save her, save her, which resulted in him dying as well, and also would have killed Kanatsu as well if not for Yakumo grabbing Kanatsu. Yeah. Which let's break let's let's break this down so that we make sure we're both on the same page uh -huh. of knowing exactly what happened because I'm actually bring up the episode yeah, yeah. and use this as a right because it looks like Kanatsu also fell. She she was going to fall. Yes. Right. And so then the he basically happened, was able to bring her back cuz she's a kid. Right. So the way it happened is Kanatsu Matsuda finds uh Matsuda finds uh Yakumo holding Sukeroku's bloody uh, body. Bloody body. He is alive though. Yeah. But Yakumo is panicking. Kanatsu shows up and immediately gets like yeah, tra I mean, that's, traumatized that's, look on her face, <sighs> and then he gets pissed. Says Matsuda, Matsuda, take her out of here. Yeah, 
and the oh, wound isn't deep. The wound isn't deep. It's nothing. Call a doctor. Just an it's accident. nothing. Just an accident. Oh but, my god! But she so, doesn't hear that. So right. that doesn't. That seems like a lie. I'm just gonna say that that feels a little bit like a lie. There is so much blood here that while it wasn't deep, the accident it might be true. Oh yeah, the accident oh, part oh, probably oh, definitely. isn't right. True. He's covering for Miyokichi. He's trying to make this all work out okay in the end. Right. But the idea that Sukuroku is gonna be okay. But but oh my god. Then Kanatsu doesn't understand. It says, "Daddy's dead, isn't he? Did you kill him?" And he and doesn't then, know what to say. And then Miyokichi freaks out and she says, don't use that word. She hugs Kanatsu while covered in Sukuroku's blood. I'm right. sorry, forgive me. I stabbed daddy. Right. And she doesn't, she isn't cluing in that it's, you know, that daddy's not dead, right? God, this oh part my here. God. I had to hear this again. Uh, this, was, this was painful. Yeah. Where she says, give daddy uh -huh. back, stupid, stupid. Oh, oh my God. God. And, oh man, and Sukuroku hears this, and it helps him oh, wake up. Oh god, and she's saying die, like she yeah. may, you know? Yeah, uh-huh. Literally pushes her, and then she forgets basically where she is. She starts to fall, breaks off the railing. Yeah. It's starting to go down, Kanatsu's there. Sukuroku Dies. rushes after her, yeah. yells out her real name. Grabs her arm, uh huh. Is hanging on just for a little bit in the same oh, way. Oh, but, but then, then yeah, then the then the actual scaffolding collapses right. and breaks with Kanatsu still, still underneath. Still halfway on it. Yep, yeah, getting dragged so over. She... Oh and, wait! And oh my and, god! And Yakumo rushed to save. Wait, wait, wait. So is it that he saved Kanatsu, not Sukuru? Yes, exactly. So he blames himself. Oh right? my god! Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. <sighs> Jeez, and then of course they both die instantly from the. From the <sighs> now, yeah, and then he covers her eyes. Yeah, yeah. she she of course uh -huh. passes out from the just from the, the shock. shock of everything. So due to the shock, her memories are hazy. Oh my god! Wow! Oh my god! This is this is the worst possible combination because. Everyone is a victim here. There's there's no individual person at fault for all of this. Uh -huh. It's just it's just a string of of bad luck oh, and man. a painful set of circumstances all lined yeah. up together to create right. the worst possible Cause, drama. Because Kanatsu already hated Miyokichi because she left. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Oh man. Oh, how, how did they find out about this again? How did how did Yotaro find out? They just they just ended up talking yeah, about yeah. this. Uh, Matsuda knew. Yeah. So Matsuda told them. Oh my god. And the fact that Hisan was coming to this conclusion that something yeah, yeah. about the uh -huh. past wasn't adding up. Wow. And then that's when Matsuda sake. says, you know, that he insisted it was all his fault, all for her sake. And right when that happened, I was like, Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. I'm like, that doesn't make sense all for her sake. Is he talking about Kanatsu? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, well, that makes sense, kind of. Right, because he doesn't want this little girl but to know that know she how caused the death of both her was. parents. And once the flashback happened, I'm like, yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, there. He sees this, yeah. And then I'm like, wait a minute. No, this isn't how it went. Because then the blood was there. I'm like, what's with the blood? Uh-huh, yeah. And then yep. it hits us all of a sudden. Whew. So okay. this is um, beautiful. What I'm also oh, yeah, impressed yeah. with is the uh -huh. show is willing to give us this twist in the middle of season two. Yeah. This is a twist that I would say also calls another thing into question. Uh -huh. And that is that Yakumo could have lied about other things. And we just have to wait and see what, if any, that, that is are. that is true. I think I think given that this is how they're having it go, and they're not giving us any context surrounding the events. Yes, we, that uh -huh, yeah, that most of the other stuff is pretty much the same way he said it. Right, but we can't we can't yeah, yeah, know. We, yeah, we can't. Well, of course, we can't know. But that, but um, yeah, obviously, there's 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 tendencies, right. and this would be the, a good way to stop. Yes, right and, here and this is where and this is where the motivation for the lie lies. Right? Is, yeah. is that he has to protect the Matsu, right? For the rest of this stuff, unless he's just wanting to keep certain details private, which he went into a lot of detail, so so probably not. Yeah. Um, 
But oh my god, this! I, I think that there is, I think that there is plenty of reason now for this to look be looked at it as a situation where he sees Sukiroku hovering around him as if he was the murderer of Sukiroku. Yeah. Oh man. And it's man. something where it's it's way less innocent than what we uh -huh. led to believe. Yeah. And yet. And yet there was no way he could have stopped this. Right. There it's, was no, there was nothing he could have done. Well, well, maybe. But that question is something that probably haunts him, right? Oh, it would absolutely haunt him. I'm saying us with the non-subjective, yep, yep. non uh -huh. you know, viewpoint, at least assuming <sighs> this is all objective reality now. Right, right, right. Um, which I would basically say mm -hmm. it is because Matsuda has no reason to yeah, lie. Yeah, Matsuda exactly. Matsuda yeah. wholesome to the extreme. Uh-huh. Um, Oh boy, oh, we and, we have the source of the shame. Yep, and we I, have in some ways the capitulation of what Hisan was investigating. Uh -huh. I, Hisan mm. had this past connection with Miyukichi, which I love how they set that up. Yeah, and uh -huh. now we get to see what it led to. It's going to lead to the moment where Yakumo gets confronted, mm -hmm. <laughs> be it by Yotaro. Oh my God! Or even by Kanatsu. And and literally, this literally with the thing. season one finale, or or technically the episode before, because season one finale yeah. I think was present day. But yeah. But we, when when they died, we were oh. talking about how like it mm. seemed so cold and arbitrary and just sort of like there's all these flaws of the characters and they definitely got them to this point. Right. But the idea that it just ended up being, oh yeah, shoddy workmanship on this area, you know. But but it it you know. That was definitely like, oh yeah, she just sort of stumbled back and leaned on it and it broke. You know, like, yeah. okay. Um, it was too cruel. It, yeah, exactly. It was too cruel. This is, in a lot of ways, even crueler, but but it's something right. where you can at least well, see the reasons and the causal effects of everything. Yes, an example of what I mean is it's not that it was actually cruel, it's more that it's too cold. Sure. And cruel yeah. assumes some form of malice. Right. None of these things were cruel. Uh -huh. It's cruel to us, the viewer, because the creator yep. wants to inflict a lot of pain upon us emotionally <laughs> but mm -hmm. the aspect of the story leading to this place where something happened mm -hmm. that caused this moment yep and regardless of what it was mm -hmm. the crux of it all uh kanatsu the the point upon which all the story was warped to fit her emotional needs yakumo has suffered with that uh -huh. in silence for decades right and thankfully I... matsuda has been there yeah but you know yakumo's never gonna really process that oh yeah he's not the type of person to really be very vocal about his feelings he's never been that kind of person not really maybe with sukuroku but that was it and uh what okay so so one of the reasons why i really really love this right <sighs> because because um this kind of this kind of twist I've seen done badly so many times, or, or oh, not sure. done done badly per se, because but but just done in kind of like a okay that felt very arbitrary. Why have this here? It just feels like a lot of the times uh, a tool to try and be like ah let's try and double dip on that experience by having sure. it actually be something slightly different. Right? I'm actually your brother. Exactly. Everyone in this you know long running TV show is related somehow. You know. Right. Yeah. Um, but in this case, it's it's a twist where where you don't see it coming, right? I mean, you could have seen it coming if you looked yeah. really closely. Yeah. But, but realistically, there's no way you're going to see it coming. Once it happens, though, it one blows your mind, right? Yeah. Of oh, yeah. holy shit, that was what happened. And two, oh my god, it makes so much sense. It makes and, so much sense. And it, and it completely recontextualizes and, and sort of retroactively recharacterizes because of a different perspective the the main character of this show right well and, yeah the, the or, main, or at least the, the main old character right yeah show, exactly yeah. because now now we on the previous generation right because one of the one of the things that that felt like understandable but but i kind of wished you know sort of say it isn't sojo is the idea that yakimo would be so guilt-ridden and everything from this that he would end up taking it out on kanatsu right that he would end up mm. like you know like being so cold to uh. her and things like that when really i mean yes that's kind of there too but he's also letting her have that truth that is more comfortable for her than the fact that i caused the death of both of my parents yeah do like, i actually 
do you want to do you want to know something that's kind of crazy about this? Uh huh. Is that they think the genius thing about this twist is that we're right and that you don't actually need it, mm -hmm. because here's something that can be explained also within the context of the Yakumo still in some ways um, punishing uh -huh. um, Kanatsu because of this is that he as kind of her pseudo father figure in this ends up basically building this wall of subconscious resentment sure because she is the reminder of not only that event which uh -huh. was what we originally thought it was, right. was that she's uh -huh. the reminder of that event yep mm -hmm. but not only that is that he is intentionally generating animosity between the two of them uh -huh. by perpetuating this lie yep which cannot remain one-sided entirely uh-huh this is one oh, of yeah. those sickening things about when you commit yourself to a lie is that it starts to become your truth sure and yeah if yakumo believed this at enough that kanatsu believed it even as a child but i mean like uh -huh. eventually there would have been teenage kanatsu imagine teenager kanatsu yeah she would have laid into him at one point oh, screamed definitely. at him about how much she wants him to die mm -hmm. that she's gonna kill him all yep. this stuff and you know what i'll bet you if anything yakumo eventually eventually his own internal like not compass but like his own internal like mechanism snapped and he basically realized that he couldn't even truly connect with her uh -huh. at a certain after well, a certain point well, maybe since then he's been actually trying to reconnect things but but yeah it well just, and also yeah. so um there are like the, the relationship between the two of them is now way more complicated than you know we ever understood before for sure but there's the aspect that we originally thought of her being a reminder, right? Right. And that totally... that It they, still fits. It still fits. They could yeah. have stuck with that and it would have worked for the whole rest of the show, right. right? Then there's also the fact that she also caused this kind yep. of... Yep. Like she did. Yep. And then on top of that, there's the fact that he saved her, not Sukiroku. Yep. And the fact, like, there's the guilt because, yes, there were mistakes that he made that brought them <sighs> to this situation, right? Mm -hmm. Where this was able to happen. <sighs> but then there's also the idea of, should I have grabbed him? Could I, could I have saved him, right? Because I didn't reach for him. You know, it wasn't something where, where I managed to grab his hand and, you know, and, and then Sukuroku, you know, let go to make sure that I was okay, right? Right. Like, and, and just the fact that that was the lie that he came up with, yeah. that also says a ton about his own internal state, right? Yeah. Because he's trying to reconcile the fact that, that Sukuroku would absolutely have been thinking about me, right? Like, you know, in that kind of situation, that's the kind of thing he would have done, right? Mm -hmm. And I probably wouldn't have been able to, to actually lift them both back up. I'm not a superhuman, right? Like, like I, you know, either they would have dropped or I would have been pulled down too, yeah. right? That's what would have happened, right? I right. have to believe that, right? Because otherwise, it's my fault, isn't it? Yep. And then, and then, yep. <laughs> and then, just like with the Rakugo, it makes his story a bit more compelling and a bit more believable to Kanatsu that yes, it is my fault because he takes that guilt on himself, so that yes, she is convinced and she can live a guilt-free life. Right. Except the fact that she wants him dead, and then that guilt also stays with her, and then. It it, it, and, it deepens the slurry, if but, you will. But maybe oh at this gosh. point, given that she's older, she's grown up a bunch and stuff, maybe that maybe could she be, can be told the truth. Maybe she can be told the truth and she can handle it and they can have reconciliation and oh man. Wow. Uh, they somehow actually uh, showcase even the slightest bit of reconciliation based on the truth being shared to Kanatsu. This show is easily going to go into my top ten. Like, like this is like I, I feel like this is uh, someone who watched Paranoia Agent and they're like, hmm, that's really good. What if we like upped it a bit further? What Paranoia if, Agent, why? The whole twist of the uh, well <laughs> cause in that there wasn't any guilt necessarily over the death, but but well, no direct cause of the death with the dog. Oh yeah. Okay, I've just seen this kind of thing in lots of stories like oh, I've really? even I've even made characters mm -hmm. based off of this thing the idea that 
the person who did a thing is so guilt ridden mm -hmm. with the fact that they did a thing that they constructed their own fantasy in fact, I almost have to be careful. There are a lot of stories that you haven't consumed, that I have consumed, oh, uh -huh. that use this kind of twist, where the character literally breaks internally because of them doing something that violated their core internal right. structure. And either by the help of the environment yeah. or their own psyche, just mm -hmm. focusing on a specific yeah. thing, that they basically disassociate themselves from the thing totally. that they're doing there. And it well, and I, and I get cool that, story right? Stuff. Like, I've seen a few stories that do that. But okay. having it be something where then it's the story about the person that is complicit in that lie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. And all the characters surrounding them. This yeah. isn't a uh -huh. character study and, in, of an individual. Right. This is a character study of a cast, yes. you know. And, and that decision that Yakumo made had collateral damage, right? It absolutely emotionally and, and psychologically tortured Kanatsu her entire life. Yeah. Right? And she's only now started to be able to heal from that. So that's even more guilt that he piles on his plate, right? Because not only do I feel like I could have stopped this, but the solution that I chose in order to shelter her is something that still ended up hurting her like crazy. Like a crazy amount. So... Like huh. He should have been able to be a father for her. Yeah, and he wasn't able to and be. he wasn't able right? to be. Yeah, he should have been the... the Regardless one... of whether or not he actually chose right. to or not. She has had to live basically her entire life alone because of the lie that she believed that you told her, right? Yep. And uh, this show is amazing. This is drama. This is, this is drama at its finest. This is drama at its finest. Oh it's God. characters making decisions uh -huh. that in the moment are entirely based upon their motivations. Yep. It makes sense why they do it. Real, long-lasting consequences yep. that then shift the motivations oh. and characterizations of the characters involved. And then those rippling effects carry mm -hmm. out and expound, yeah. expand, or yeah, ex exponentially mm -hmm. expand right, right. over the course of time. Because time doesn't heal all wounds. No, it doesn't. Time heals very few wounds, and then other wounds, it... Uh, time progresses Time things. Time uh, allows wounds to evolve. Yeah, exactly. And that yeah. can be in a positive or a negative. Yeah. And again, I know I said this before, but I need to say it again. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like there could be so many people where they're like, this twist is amazing, and then there are a bunch of other stories out there where they try to do twists like this, and it doesn't work out well because not proper attention is paid to stories like this, mm -hmm. why the twist works. It, you don't see it coming, but once it happens, you're like, oh my God, that makes sense. And oh my God, what does that mean for everything moving forward, right? right. Because, because it's something where you're like, yep, that's totally consistent with the characters. And especially, especially when you have a character that's been keeping a secret for a long period of time, yeah. right? You need to be very careful with how you deal with that character in yeah. all of their private moments. One of the good yeah. things that they've done with Yakimo in the second season is that because he's got one foot in the grave, we haven't really shown him dealing with all the things that he needs to deal with because he's been avoid dealing with it and because he's already put the guilt upon himself so we don't have to worry about the inconsistencies that would come up if he's actually processing the stuff that actually happened right or not processing it because you don't want the audience to see that which mm -hmm. he would be if you're seeing him when no one else is around yes but we have seen him alone multiple times this uh -huh, season uh-huh uh -huh. and and it all Ch works Ch it works Ch like Jacob <sighs> hold on do you know what those moments even are like like at the grave it's all the stuff with Sukiroku yeah exactly the Sukiroku uh -huh. in his mind yep yep and yeah. it's all very ambiguous yeah. it's it's not like details well, being talked about and things not like anymore that. well yeah not anymore it's yeah. not oh definitely no it's not ambiguous uh -huh. anymore it's all crystal at all. clear but he killed him <sighs> That's that's what he sees. He killed Sukeroku. Yeah. It is it is it is literally one phrase. That is that is that is the twist for Yakumo. Yep. For Yakumo, originally we saw this as unfortunate accident. Right. Now that he kind of played a like yes, played a part. Absolutely. In. Yeah. But but mm -hmm. in this it's now no he sees it. This is what he actually believes. Yakumo is the Grim Reaper, the Shinigami that came and reaped his soul. He came and actually, like, killed Sukiroku. Oh. That is how he sees it. That and is why he is haunted by the yep, ghost of yep. Sukiroku. That's why when he finally talks, it's this moment of, oh, now you finally start talking. Right. And then the idea that at this moment where... You know, yep. like the moment where he was in the hall with the candles and what have you. Oh, yeah. Sukuroku's uh, strangling him. 
that's what he feels like he deserves. Mm-hmm. That's what he feels like Sukeroku. Yeah. In his own weakened state that he would feel like Sukeroku would actually right. resent him but, for but what of, happened. But of course, there's the part of the his internal thing of Sukeroku that says, what are you doing here? Yeah. My daughter's still out there. Mm-hmm. Right? And, ah! and the fact, the other, the, the last nah. thing I'll say for this episode, and it's it's one of those devilish, in, not devilish in the details, but it's those no big deal things that matter the most, right? The fact uh-huh. that the fact that Yakumo, when it happens, when Matsuda sees this and Kanatsu sees this, and of course she doesn't hear what he's saying, but he's saying, it's not that deep, you know, it's okay, it was just an accident. He is so desperately trying to smooth it over and cover it up and make it so they can go back to the way things were because yeah. they finally got to that point where they could have their happy ending. Right. But it didn't work out that way. Nope. Yeah. yeah, my uh my my last thing I'll say here was that I I think I started to suspect something was a little off once I realized why his son was being brought into the story. Oh yeah, uh-huh. And there was something I think I mentioned this back in like episode 3 or 4 of mm-hmm. season 2. I think it was episode 3. There's this moment when you realize that his son is not um he is not uh, the kind of person who is coming at this from the standpoint of trying to help any of the characters there. He had right. his own specific motivation that he mm-hmm. was being secretive about. Which now makes total sense. And I think I think mm-hmm. I had basically this prediction that was percolating in the back of my mind that there was some not not lies necessarily, but there were some secrets mm-hmm. hidden within the backstory right. that we got. Yep. in this first season mm-hmm. that he was going to uncover but i thought it was going to be more related actually to mm-hmm. um uh to things with regards to uh, uh basically like 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 stuff within stuff within kanatsu like post sure like stuff, yeah stuff right. that basically the 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 yeah uh, the, the backstory basically gave us the foundation uh-huh. for then a huge time skip right. that would happen in between the very beginning of the yeah. episode, of the very beginning of the right. show, to mm-hmm. the backstory ending. Right. Revealing things that had not been shown that make sense given what the foundation had been laid, but yeah. not recontextualizing things not that we had that. already seen. Right. More of just that he had a motivation and that he didn't like Yakumo because he, he rejected him, he right? He rejected but him. But no, yeah. I guess it goes a bit further than that. And it makes sense why he wants to uncover all this stuff because, yeah, okay, now he's heard this. Now he has a way that he can grow because the woman he loved was essentially yep. killed, you know, yep. in a lot of ways as a result of Yakumo or, you know, or, or Kanatsu, right? Like, so, so what happens there? Uh, huh. I'm thinking back to the OP and how they're all surrounding him. Uh huh. And you realize that this is, this OP is all from Yakumo's perspective. Yep. Totally. And so can I just bring this up real quick? Cause I think uh-huh. this is genius. The OP always starts with everyone's faces. Mm hmm. And it's all basically all the faces of these people looking at Yakumo, oh. giving him basically their own kind of emotional mm-hmm. thing there, the way they see him, basically. Sure. Yeah. Then you have uh, him basically right after seeing all their faces, he turns and goes, and goes into, into hell, the, goes into hell, basically. Yeah. And as he's wandering this place of, you know, infiniteness and death or what have you, he comes to the lake, which is probably like. An actual place of death. Well, he leaps oh my, into it. Yeah, just like how they fell. Just yeah. like how they fell. Yep. yep. So he wants to die in the same way they did, and kind of that. Right, way because of, maybe he should have. Maybe he should have tried to grab them, and even if he hadn't, he should have died in. with them. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Then, of course, as he lands in this, he realizes that it's all glowing with light. There's this brilliance and what have you. And then you have this young boy uh-huh. that bumped into him. Yep. Basically, yep. in the same way that he son kind of did, and was just like, "Hey." I have that same Sukiroku yep. crazy vibe and and reaches I, down to pull him up. Reaches down to pull him up rather than him yeah. reaching yeah. up to mm-hmm. be like please be my master, please let me be apprenticed by mm-hmm. you. Yep, yep. And yet he doesn't let him. He he basically sinks back in intentionally. Right. And then they show Miyokichi and it's like a winding back in time. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Yep. Aspect there. And yep. then right at the end 
you see them on the record player and Spinning. all the characters are Evangelion kind of style surrounding uh-huh. him yeah, yeah, and yeah. offering him their hand. Yeah. It's like they're and he's not him, taking them. It's like they're offering him forgiveness. Yeah. Oh and he's my like, God. no, I can't do it. Oh. And then basically and then Sukiroku, Sukiroku which is a projection of himself, obviously, Re- opens up that he's mm-hmm. dead inside. He's been dead all along. And then they literally, this is the part that I think is genius. They literally told us they were going to recontextualize things. Right after Sukiroku reveals this, yeah. everything goes in reverse and re- rewinds. Oh. Oh my god. So it's it's oh. like it's like right I, and, and it's so intentional. Yeah, and and it's, of course uh, when you're seeing it, you're just thinking, yeah, this is all because of the things that happened in the past. <laughs> it's because of the things that happened in the past. Alright. Alright. I think I think I think now now i yeah, now that I thought about it a little bit more, now I'm like, okay, I, I definitely, definitely want to go and check back for all the little mm. all the little thematic oh i can imagine there are so many like yeah that because so, there's so many intentional things they do with the shots oh, of yeah. each individual part of the episodes that 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 has to be like one of the easiest things for them to subtly reinforce mm-hmm. for the for the yep. twist that's coming i loved this show before this i absolutely oh, loved same. it it yeah. was fantastic there's no denying that it's incredible yeah. right this this is one of those twists that you never forget, right? Like, like I could maybe count on one hand, right? The number of times I feel like I've experienced something like this where my entire perspective on something changes in an instant, yeah. right? The- Yakumo basically just became my favorite character. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Like... And, and, oh my god, Kanatsu, like, how will she get a happy end? Like, oh, there are rough roads ahead. Yep. But y'all, we're going to see those rough roads in the next episode yep. with you. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things we didn't get to discuss here because the twist just took up so much of it. I that's all, that's all I got in me. So yep. thank you all for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access there. You can watch full-length timer reactions there. And all this comes with Discord access. So you can chat with us and the community there about this show, about anime in general. You can also talk with Jacob about the book that he wrote. Yep, I wrote a sci-fi novel. It's called Battle Lines. And even if sci-fi isn't your thing, it's very character-focused and stuff. Not on this level, but it's really cool and you should check it out it's on amazon link in the description below it's in hardback and ebook go check it out yeah so if any of that interests you we'll see you there but until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm jacob and we'll see you all next time